Hey there, I'm Jalen, and I talk about clothes and stuff. If you like that, give the channel a subscription. We're almost at 100 subscribers, baby, and I want to hit that milestone. But regardless, if you like this video at the end, just give it a like or something, you know? Comment something. I'll tell you what to comment later. Don't worry about that right now. And let's get on to what's actually in this video. So in this video, if you couldn't tell by the, or if you couldn't actually get what I mean, by styling colognes in the title, I'll tell you. So I got this video idea from a channel called One Dapper Street, and in that video, he was taking all the clones that he had, or some of the clones that he had, and giving each one a certain look that he interpreted from the smell of the cologne. And that's what I'll be doing here as well. I'll have scent notes on screen for you to look at for each look, and I'll also be, you know, giving my own interpretation of each cologne as well with my own bad nose. <laughs> But that's really the gist of the video. I'm sure you've never asked yourself, I wonder what outfit this looks like when you put on any fragrance, whether that be cologne or perfume. And honestly, I just think the idea, the video idea is creative. I liked his take on it, but I wanted to put my own spin on it because we have different styles, we have different scents as well. And I actually got all of my scent notes from a website called Fragrantica. It is pretty much the encyclopedia I used for all of the scent notes for this video and it was an amazing resource when I did research because I actually used it before I got the colognes and it helps me help me write the video that you're watching right now. But without further ado, let's get into the first look, all right? So this first look that I'm styling is called Burberry London for men. The way I personally would describe this smell would be spicy, sweet and earthy. I know it's got hints of cinnamon and other stuff in there. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's what the scent notes are on screen for. And because of how I smell it, how I interpret the smell, I kind of went for something a little bit, with something a little bit more rugged, I guess. Hence why I'm wearing a leather jacket. But I also kind of wanted to go for something a little bit more dressed up or something like that. It just smells very musky and very kind of formal, I guess. Um, so that's why I went with these loafers and these trousers. But whole outfit breakdown. Up top, we've got this leather jacket. I just mentioned it a second ago. It's a thrifted leather jacket, and I'm very happy with the find because it's genuine leather. It's gonna last me like literally, literally forever. And the shirt that I'm wearing underneath it is a Uniqlo oversized areas and t-shirt. And I've got on this pair of trousers. I had them tailored just so that they would be cropped a little bit. And that really helps show off the shoes I'm wearing, which is a pair of loafers. Hey, chill. I just like how the look and the smell go together, in my mind at least. It's a very, very down to earth, very earthy look, but it's also spicy and sweet. So I kind of wanted to go for some little spice into the jacket. And I feel like the trousers kind of, I don't know, they're that sweet part. While this is just a very neutral base, this is actually a very neutral outfit in general. I mean, it's a bunch of earth tones and black. What's more neutral than that, really? But that's all I have to say about Burberry London. Let's get on to the next clone, or next scent, I should say, um, and that'll be Calvin Klein Free. Can I get a fact check, actually? You're very right. First look, Jalen, this is Calvin Klein's Free. And um, before I get started with breaking down the look, I just want to say that to me, the scent is very fresh, very sweet, but also very woody as well. And it strikes a nice balance between those three. And I went with this look, which is a white knit sweater that I had thrifted in perfect condition, might I add. So this was a really good find. And then I also have on these trousers by Ralph Lauren. They're really nice and they flow really well too. I like how they fit too. And we have the, shirt, the loafers on from the first look. Again, I just think that the loafers really dress it up a little bit, even though this is kind of already dressed up. Um, I wear these cat these trousers pretty casually, and so when I dress them up, I feel like I gotta dress them up since they're trousers. But the reason I went with this look is because the white kind of adds a little bit of the sweetness and the freshness in my mind to the look. Meanwhile, the woodiness of the scent is characterized in the look via the trousers. And I think the loafers just kind of complete it um, I could really honestly wear any pair of shoes with this, in my opinion, or at least any pair of like chunky soled shoes, 
So even in a pair of Air Force Ones, in my mind, would go with this look, and it would look just as good. Well, not yeah, just as good, but in a different way. But that's really all I have to say about Calvin Klein's Free. Let's get on to the next scent, which is another Calvin Klein scent. And I'm right, this next scent is Calvin Klein. This time it's Obsession by him. And I would describe this scent as being warm and spicy. And that's why I went with this look. It's very warm. I'm on the verge of sweating right now in my own air-conditioned apartment. But let's break the look down. Up top we have this uh, sweater from Uniqlo. It's a mock neck. I forget the exact name of it, but I'm sure I'll have a link to it in the description. Along with every other look every other look broken down um, via article of clothing. I'll have that all broken down in the description as well, just so you know. I've kept on the same Ralph Lauren trousers and the same loafers, and I just wanna say that I really think that keeping the look very tonal completely changed it, despite the fact that I only changed the sweater. Um, this looks very different from the last outfit that I showed, if you ask me at least, and that's what I like about this because the bases are the same, the shoes, the pants, but having a top layer that's completely different or a top part that's completely different that changes the whole mood, I think that really falls in line with the fact that this and the last scent were both Calvin Klein, but they're both different Calvin Kleins with different vibes and everything and different scents. And so that's why I went with this partially. Partially is just because this feels like a warm hug. This sweater is very comfortable, it's very warm. It's heavy, but it's not overbearingly so. Like you could wear this on a winter day and be fine so long as it doesn't get too cold or like too wet. But that's really why I went with this. It smells good. And if someone hugged you while wearing this, you probably wouldn't want them to stop hugging you. And that's kind of how this look looks to me and feels to me as well. This feels like a hug. This is a very nice sweater. <laughs> but that's all I have to say about Calvin Klein's obsession. Let's get on to the next scent, which should be Dunhill Custom, if I'm not mistaken. Can I get another fact check, please? Yes, it is Dunhill Custom. I don't know why you're asking me if you already know the answers. But this sweet is very spicy, it's very woody, and it's very um, sweet as well. Um, the hints of red apple, or the notes of red apple in this scent add that sweetness, at least from what I can tell. But we'll get on to the red apples in just a second. The look comprises of this corduroy blazer that I thrifted. I was drawn to corduroy at the time, I guess. And this maroon Uniqlo mock neck that I got from Uniqlo, obviously. And the reason I chose this as the base layer for my top is because of the red apples. Um, this look isn't completely inspired by the smell. I also wanted to style some of the notes as well. So this red, this red shirt, or this maroon shirt ties into the red apple that you can smell in the scent. And I just thought that was a nice idea, a little change up since I wouldn't have to be so strictly basing everything off of how it smells. So it made it a little easier for me to come up with an outfit as well. And on my legs are these trousers that I got from ASOS. They are cuffed and they just add a little bit more detail and a little bit more elevation to the outfit as well. And on feet are these Bershka Bonettas. I call them that because they're the Bershka version or the Bershka dupe of the Bottega Bonetta tire boot. And I cannot afford those right now. So I went with Bershka's version. But that's really all I have to say about this look for Dunhill Custom. Let's get on to the next look. Hey, don't, no more fact checking, okay? This next look that I'm styling is Gentleman by Givenchy. And I went with this because it's called Gentleman, so I figure I should dress up a little bit. Up top, I've got on these... Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I think the reason that I just kind of mentally skipped the notes is because this smells like straight vanilla to me. Like, I cannot smell anything else. I know there's hints of black pepper and other stuff in there, but base notes as vanilla, the note is vanilla to me. But that doesn't mean it doesn't smell good. I love this scent. It's very sweet as well. Of course it is, it's vanilla. But let's let's get back to what I was about to say. And I dressed up a little bit for this outfit, style Givenchy Gentleman. And so I went with this blazer. It's thrifted, it's made of camel hair. That's just a cool detail about it, I don't know. Camel hair. <laughs> Underneath it, the base layer, is this sweater. It's Tommy Hilfiger. For the pants, I've got on pair of Ralph Lauren corduroys. These are thrifted as well. I got these for an absolute steal. They were a dollar. You cannot beat that. 
And on feet, I've got on the Bershka Bonettas again. I just think that this look is very sweet. It's very elevated, so you can go out to like a fancy dinner, you know, with your partner. Um, in my case, my lady. And you know, it would you would fit in just right with it. You smell really good doing so. I went ahead and styled it with the white corduroys because vanilla. Um, you usually see things that have that are made with vanilla as white even though it does come brown. But regardless, that's why I went with the trousers. I also just went with this light colored blazer because it it's not heavy, it's not too serious, and that's what I think this smell is. It's not heavy or serious at all. It's very light, well, very heavy on vanilla, but it's very light hearted, I guess you could say, figuratively. And that's really all I have to say about this scent. Let's get on to the next one, okay? So this next scent is Guilty by Gucci. You've probably heard of it, it's very popular. And that's actually what gravitated me towards it. I would describe this smell as very sweet, as very fresh, but also kind of sophisticated and low key. And that's kind of how I styled it This with this look. So up top, I've got on a black knit sweater. I drifted it. It was in perfect condition, but wearing it kind of stretched out and everything. But I think it looks good on me still. And we have on the brown Ralph Lauren trousers yet again. But on feet, we have on a pair of Dr. Martens. They're the Ollie model. Um, and I kind of went with this look, again, because it's very low profile. I think it's a little bit mature, elevated, whatever you want to call it, or smart would probably be the best word. But the Doc Martens add a little bit of edginess to it as well. And I think that edginess is needed since this scent is called guilty after all. If you aren't edgy, what are you guilty of? You know, like if you don't have a little bit of edge, what could you possibly have done? You know, but that's really all I have to say about guilty by Gucci's look. Um, let's get on to the next one, shall we? So this next scent that I'm styling is Hugo Boss's Just Different. And true to the name, I went ahead and switched up completely. This is probably the most casual look you've seen in this video so far. And I like it a lot, actually. And let's get into the look itself. So up top, we've got on this deep green Union Clo long sleeve shirt with a pocket, the pocket on it. And I actually, um, I like the placement of the pocket too. I like that it's lower than on your chest. I don't know why, it's just a neat detail to move it slightly down. But I went ahead with this color of shirt because of the Granny Smith apples and the mint of the scent itself, bars. And I just feel like green, since Granny Smith apples are green and mint is green, would really tie in the scent as well. And um, we have on these black, cuff trousers that you saw in the other look in another look there from ASOS yet again and on feet we have on the Chuck Taylor 70s in a white and egret colorway I really think that ties into the freshness and the mintiness I guess of the look too since a lot of minty things you see as white such as peppermints candy canes chewing gum etc and I really like this look actually it's pretty casual and it's kind of an everyday kind of look as well. This is kind of an everyday scent. It's nothing too heavy. It doesn't really have like a certain mood to it other than like toothpaste, I guess. <laughs> this isn't a dog on the scent in any case. It smells phenomenal to me. But that's really all I have to say about this look and all I have to say about Hugo just different. Let's get on to the next one, which is another Hugo Boss scent. So this next scent that I'll be uh, styling is called Hugo Reversed. And I would describe it as being very fruity, but like subtly so. It's sweet, definitely, and it's also kind of earthy as well. And I'll be real, I didn't style this cologne based off of what it smells like. I kind of styled it based off of the name itself because I was very stumped on how to style something like this with my current wardrobe. And I'm sure I could think of something if I brainstormed a little bit longer, but I had a eureka moment and I was like, if it's called reversed, why not do a reverse of something? So I went ahead and did that. Um, if you know anything about color theory, you may know that purple, which is the color of this shirt, and green are complementary colors. You know, purple and green, they go together because they're opposites. Um, so let's break it down. So up top you've got on a purple Uniqlo long sleeve shirt with a pocket. The pocket is slightly higher, actually on this one 
that's crazy. That's that's a good detail because these are the same. They were the same model of shirt, but the pocket is in different places. At least I think. Don't quote me on that, but they feel like they're in different places. But that tangent aside, I went ahead with these rotting cargo pants as well. I feel like they add to the earthiness of the scent, or they accentuate the earthiness of the scent. And the reason I like this look together, the shirt and the pants, is because this purple isn't just like a regular purple. It's kind of faded. And this isn't just a regular olive green. It's kind of faded. And I think that these two complement each other perfectly. But let's get on to the shoes, which are the Bershka Veneta's. I like them a lot. They're very easy to put on, and very easy to style, and they kind of add a little bit of ruggedness to the look as well. And that's really all I had to say about Hugo Reversed. I didn't pick an outfit based on the smell. I picked one based on the name. <laughs> but let's get to the next one. We've only got a few more, so hang in there with me, okay? So for this look, I am styling Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mail, and just before I get started, I'm gonna show you the actual bottle. And it's this right here, this male torso. I thought it was cool. This is just a tin can kind of thing that says Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mail on it. I think it's really cool. And I actually got a whiff of the fragrance when I opened it, so it's very strong. But speaking of the fragrance, it's very sweet. It's very light, sensual, and fresh as well. And so that's why I styled it this way. This is a white knit sweater that you've seen in a previous look in this video, along with a pair of Levi's 505s. They're the high-waisted model, and I really like high-waisted pants. I recommend them for anybody and everybody. But on feet, we have on a pair of Nike Air Force Ones. You see them every day, probably. You know, you know what they look like. And I went with this outfit because it's very casual, you know, especially with the blue jeans, kind of very keeping it casual. But, like, you can wear this on a date, you know, just like a regular date with your person. I could see myself, you know, taking my lady to, I don't know, breakfast or lunch or something. Just like anywhere, this any diner, restaurant, cafe, I feel like this outfit would work in. And that's why I went ahead and did this. It's kind of like a date set to me. But that's all I have to say about Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mail. Let's get on to the next one. I feel like what James Dean. <laughs> Let's go. But... This is John Barbados' Dark Rebel, and this is how I style it. So the scent itself is very masculine, very earthy, musky. It's very, like, strong, manly large, you know? But that's kind of why I went with something like this. That and the name Dark Rebel, um, it made me think of Rebel Without a Cause, a movie from the 50s, and in that movie, I forget who, like, what superstar was in it. I think it was James Dean, that's why I said that joke earlier. But, you know, they had a look back then. A lot of motorcyclists back then had a look. And that was a leather jacket, of course, a t-shirt, blue jeans, and usually Chuck Taylors. But I went ahead with something different. Let's get into it. So, the leather jacket, I feel like, you know, rebellious, edgy, cool, whatnot, all that stuff. And then the t-shirt is just a base layer, you know, just so that way I'm not raw dog in a leather jacket. Don't take that out of context, please. And on, I've got the Levi 505s again. The jeans that they wore back then in the 50s did have a high rise. That and I just like these pants a lot. Like, they are my favorite blue jeans I've ever had. And on feet, we've got the Doc Martin Ollies. Um, I went with combat boots instead of chucks um, because while chucks are more faithful, I feel like Doc Martens or just combat boots in general add an edginess and ruggedness to the look that they were missing back then. And that's really all I have to say about this look. Or dark rubble let's get on to the next and last one so for this last look this look that I literally just threw together on a whim I honestly did not go with the outfit that I've written down at all except this one the turtleneck oh my god but let's get on to the scent itself it's very sweet spicy and fresh I also think it's a little bit sophisticated and smart in that in all those aspects so that's why I went with this outfit this is a collusion turtleneck, not sweater neck. Excuse my faux pas from earlier. I got this from ASOS, but I would not recommend getting this unless you wear something underneath it, but you probably won't want to wear anything underneath it because it's a very warm sweater. But I like the look of it at least. It's a black turtleneck. You really can't go wrong with how those look. But on my legs, I've got on these Uniqlo and Jill Saunders trousers. I like the pleating. I like how it just goes straight down too. 
and I really think it smartens this look up. The turtleneck does a lot to do that as well, but I think the trousers just really complete how smart this, this looks, literally. Um, on the feet, we've got on the Burst Bonettas as well, and I only did that because this scent has coal in it, or hints of coal in it, so I wanted to add a little bit of ruggedness to the outfit as well. I really like how this looks. I like how it goes together. I feel like I could go to Harvard in this, and I would fit in, even though I would not fit in academically at Harvard. But I like this look. I like this scent. Um, not only do I just like it, but it also has a special memory with it. I got this when my girlfriend and I went shopping for my birthday, and this was at one of the scent outlets or fragrance outlets that we were shopping at, and I got it, and it's my first product scent, I guess. Um, that's really all I have to say about this scent. It is the last one, but I do have a few more things I want to say, so just give me one second, okay? So, before I let you go, I want to tell you thank you for sticking through all 11 of those looks. I know I have a lot of cologne, but I really appreciate the fact that you hung in there with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. But also, I want to say that I didn't get most of these full price. The only ones that I bought for full price were Gucci Guilty and Gentleman by Givenchy. Um, and the only reason I paid full price for those is because I was buying them from Ulta. Um, I don't think they ever have colognes on sale. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't go there anymore because I only ever went there for fragrances. But ever since I realized that you can buy good designer colognes for a pretty decent price, like $25 to $40 like max. So a little tip is go to your local Burlington, go to your local Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, whatever it may be and check out their cologne section. I'm sure you'll find something there. And since you can't like spray test them, since they're all packaged or usually like locked up, then go to Fragrantica. This isn't sponsored by the way. I don't think they do sponsors, but go to Fragrantica so that we can get a, bit, a general sense of what it smells like. That's how I purchased damn near most of these. Also another good way to get some colognes that are designer that are good for a pretty decent price would be Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom Rack is an outlet of Nordstrom, and you it's all sales stuff. Um, sometimes they do clearance as well, which is just an extra markdown, but Nordstrom Rack itself is all sales stuff, so if you just go to their fragrance section, you're gonna find stuff for $10 maybe, and you're gonna find stuff for like $60 maybe, but it's gonna be good stuff that costs way more at retail. So that's just another word to the wise. And lastly, I will say, again, I will have all of these looks in the description below, so that way you can kind of keep track of what I'm wearing, and I'll have the scent above it as well, so that way you can keep track of those as well. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it immensely. I know this was probably tiring for you to watch. It was tiring for me to make. This is my third time recording all of these together. So imagine putting on 11 different outfits. It, it's tedious, if not hard. But I appreciate you. I really hope that you like this video. If you do, please give it a like. Please comment what your favorite look was. Comment what your favorite scent is, like that you own, because I genuinely want to know. You know, cologne. It's very personal. Like taste and fragrance is very personal. Everyone's got their own comfort scent. So I want to know what yours is. So tell me that in the comments below. Also, share this video with a friend. Tell your friend to subscribe. Tell your friend's friend to subscribe. Tell your friend to tell your friend's friend to subscribe. All that good stuff. All those calls to action all those YouTubers make you do. But other than that, have a good one to give your mom a big fat hug for me. Thank you.